Tonight we continue our series on the pathway to the place of Jehovah Jireh, and we're going to be talking about the resurrection of desire. Now, last week we read Genesis 15:1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing as I go childless? Now, this was the first time that Abram asked anything of God. Abram had been through a lot. I mean, he'd gotten up out of Ur of the Chaldees, the place where his family was, the place where he was raised, the place where he had a good business, a thriving business, and he left everything behind. Abram had been obedient, obedient when it didn't make sense, obedient when he, it meant letting go, obedient when it wasn't really clear exactly what God was asking of him. He just started out and entrusted God, giving the rest along the way. But God was faithful and prospered him. But this wasn't the fir- but this was the first time Abram asked for anything. Now, the interesting thing is, is that many of us, the first thing we do is start asking of God, and we forget about obedience. After these things, what are we talking about? What things? After Abram paid tithes to Melchizedek, the pre-incarnate Christ. This established his access to the covenant with God. The first time he asked for anything, what did he ask for? He asked for a child. Now, where did he get the idea of asking for a child? i tell you where he got it. He got it from the first time God ever spoke to him in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, where he said, that he's going to make of him, in verse 2, a great nation. He gave Abram a vision. And how many of you know, in order to make a great nation, you got to have a child, right? That Hebrew word for nation was goy, or people. It takes people to make people. He needed a son. But, you know, it was more than that. It was a natural desire of his heart. But that desire had long since died. Abram tells God, look, You've given me no offspring. God responds, from your loins, Abram. Now, Abram's loins were dry. What were his circumstances? Long since had his loins dried up. Sarai's womb was barren from youth. It had never been fertile. God is looking squarely at the impossibility, and he speaks his possibility. God looks upon the circumstances that Abram looked at and Abram was saying it's past time for the vision and God brings Abram outside and says now I want you to look you know we get so focused on what we want to look at God is redirecting Abram's attention and he says I want you to look come look at the stars if you are able count them if you are able well how many of you know it's impossible to count the stars I mean we bring out the Hubble te- telescope and uh, the latest advancement. We send that thing out into space where we, we can escape all the impurities of our atmosphere. And, and what do we learn? We learn that there's more stars out there than we've seen in the first place. And, and, and it's even more impossible to count them. When a desire dies, one's ability to spiritually see and believe begins to die with it. But God wants to expand your heart. That's what he was doing with Abram. He says, look at the stars, Abram. Look beyond what you are capable of of counting. Look beyond what you are capable of doing. Enlarge your heart. And that means growing your ability to believe and to receive. Now, Genesis 15, 6 says, And he, Abram, believed in the Lord and He, God, accounted it to him, Abram, for righteousness. You know what? That's a New Testament concept right there smack dab in the Old Testament. And it took place when? It took place after these things. What things? The payment of the tithe to Christ. We see the believer's authority being spoken of here, that, that, that he was a possessor. Abram was a possessor of heaven and earth. And he says, That Abram, he says to Abram, I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. I'm your protection and I am your provider. Now, these New Testament eternal realities 
were given some 430 years before the law was given. Folks, these things are not in the law. They, don't, they precede the law. They are eternal. God never changes. He is immutable. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what we're saying here is that the tithe is not an Old Testament concept. It's not thing of the law. It is something that is an eternal uh, seed time and harvest uh, concept that, that, that is a, uh, an eternal spiritual concept that works for us today. So Abram accessed these eternal realities and the benefits of the covenant by paying the tithe. Now, God wants to stretch your heart to receive just like he did Abram. And when you consider your tithes and offerings tonight, I want you to consider what God wants to do when you access your covenant with him. In doing that, I want you to go back a ways. I want you to go back to the words that God has spoken to your heart. Dust them off because there's still life in those rhema words that he's spoken to you just as much as there was life in those dry loins of Abram and that barren womb of Sarah. Consider what visions and desires that have long since died and what God wants to resurrect in the midst of the impossibilities that you face. Let your heart expand to believe that you receive.